Mathematicians really like being lazy if they can get away with it. And one of the ways that we allow ourselves to be lazy, or perhaps efficient is the better word, is to come up with new terminology, new symbols, that allow us to collapse larger, more cumbersome things into shorthand. And so when we have some large amount of mathematics where we're using the same sort of phrase over and over and over again, we can just replace it by this one symbol. So that's what we're gonna do with this universal quantifier. It's like an upside down A, and it means for all. So just a little bit of shorthand. Now, the reason why I care about this is, let's go back to the idea of a predicate. A predicate is something that is sometimes true or sometimes false. But I might have it that the predicate is always true. Or it could be that for all values of x, the predicate is true. So this is why we call it a quantifier. The for all quantifies some properties about a predicate. So the main use is in this form. And the, the, the way I write it down is like this. Now, this collection of symbols, let's try to understand it. First, we have the upside down A, the for all symbol. So that means for all. Then we have X inside of the domain. So this is saying for all X's in the domain, for all input values. And then we have our predicate P of X. So it says for all input values, this predicate, this P of X must be true. So that's how I'm gonna translate this. And it depends on what your predicate is and what your domain is. Sometimes if you have a predicate and domain, it will be the case that every single value of the input is going to be true. The previous example, we were looking at the factors of 12, that wasn't the case. It was a subset of the domain. So it wasn't all of them, but sometimes it will be. For instance, let's look at the familiar, every dog is a mammal. And built into the very definition of what a dog is, is that this must be a mammal. And built into the very idea of what a dog is, part of its definition is that a dog is going to be a mammal. So let's try to break this sentence down and interpret it in terms of our language for all x and d, p of x. Perhaps the first thing to note is that we have this every hit here. And every is sort of synonymous with for all. In English, if I say every one of these things or all of these things, I mean the same thing. So this portion of it is just going to be our for all. Now, the next thing I want to figure out is what's the X in D? Well, I'm saying every single dog. So what my X's are all going to be, they're, my X's are going to be animals that are in the set of dogs. So I'm going to say that my D is equal to the set of dogs and that the, this part of it where I've got every dog is referring to this portion here, X inside of D. So my D is going to be my dogs. And then I also have this portion on the far right hand side where I've got the is a mammal. Well, that's what's going to be my property. In other words, I'm going to say that my predicate, my P of X, that what this means is X is a mammal. So in other words, when I look at my every dog is a mammal, I'm saying for all, that's my every, X in the set of dogs. So for every dog is for all X in the set of dogs, X is going to be a mammal. And that's my predicate. We have another shorthand that's related called the existence quantifier and this is supposed to be an, an upside down a it is a backwards e and it means a shorthand for there exists and likewise with the universal quantifier the existential quantifiers main purpose is to quantify a predicate so let's try to interpret this statement the backwards e means there exists so this says there exists something in the domain there exists an input value where the predicate is true. In other words, there exists an X in the domain such that the predicate is true. If I have a predicate and a domain, there's several different possibilities. One possibility is what we saw previously, where every single input in the domain is going to result in the predicate becoming true. Another possibility could be that 
There's no input in the domain that's going to make it true, or every input in the domain is going to make it false. So those are sort of two extreme cases. One where every input's true, there's where we're going to use the for all. And the other one is where none of them is going to be true. We might use the for all there as well to say, for all x in the domain, this thing is false. But for ones in the middle where there's some which are going to be true, or at least one which is going to be true, that's when we're going to use the existential quantifier. So this is saying, look, there is at least one thing in the domain, might be more, might be a lot more, but there is at least one, there exists an x where the property is going to be true. And so it's nice to be able to have our predicates and distinguish between these various different situations where every one of them is true or none of them is true or where at least one of them is going to be true. Now, as an example, let's look at this. Some person in the world is going to be the oldest. Note that, again, I haven't used exactly the same terminology. I've got this some hanging out here. But if I say some person, it's kind of like the same thing as saying there exists a person. So the sum that I have here, I'm going to say is the same thing as my there exists. And then if I move over to person, well, what I'm saying here is what my domain is. I'm, I'm therefore going to be say that my x is an element of the domain D, where domain D are going to be equal to the set of people in the world. Note that sometimes in English we, we break up our domains a little bit. We've, we've got the person here, but the in the world's over there. So they sort of come together to be what our domain is. We're talking about people in the world, even though in English I've sort of spread them apart in my sentence. And then the last part to consider is this bit here, which is the oldest. That is going to be our predicate. So in other words, we're going to say that our P of X is going to be X is the oldest. So given the statement for the predicate and the domain, this sentence has precisely this form. We've got some person translates to there exists a person in the world that has this particular predicate being true. In other words, it has this X is the oldest person in the world. Now, it's important for us to keep in mind the difference between logical statements, which are true or false, and predicates, which depend on the input variable x that lives in some domain. So for example, if I look at Rufus, a particular dog is a mammal, then, then what I have over here, this is going to be a statement. Contrast that with this predicate, x is going to be a mammal. So this is going to be a predicate. Note carefully the difference in the symbology here. When it's a statement, I just used p. Rufus, a particular animal, is going to be a mammal. And then when I have a predicate where it depends on what the input is, it depends on whether it's a dog or a reptile or anything else, then it's not clear whether it's going to be a mammal. So we write p of x because it depends on what that input is. Now, what does a quantifier do? If I go and put either the universal or the existential quantifier in front of a predicate, it turns it back into a statement. So this is going to be a statement again. And the reason is that, that this claim here is either true or false. For example, one of our ones with the universal quantifier was every dog is a mammal. We saw that was of the form for all x in some domain, p of x. But every dog is a mammal is a true statement. This is a logical statement that I've made. Or likewise, if I'm going to say there exists an oldest person, that is a true statement. So it is a logical statement. So when I quantify a predicate, that that is going to turn it into a logical statement.